Hi. I wanted to take you through um, how we see building our company, how we are building Genesis Home Technology Architects. So this is for new people joining the company, new companies working with us, also suppliers who have been working with us for a long time so that we share uh, a view on where we're coming from, where we are and where we're going. So it's we, the way we see it, it's a little bit like driving from Copenhagen to Naples, but without the GPS. So you drive from city to city, you, you ask and you learn along the way, you meet people, but you always know that you're going to Naples. So, and as we drive south, as we get closer, we drive more on instinct. So what people tell you is information that you process, but then you make up your own mind on, on how you get there. So we figure things out as we drive, as we, as we encounter roadblocks, traffic, um, sometimes even almost run out of fuel. I mean, fuel is king, cash is king. Um, and sometimes, or, or often, things feel like you're driving in a mist, you're driving in heavy rain or storm, and you only have one headlight working, and the windscreen wipers are old and don't operate that well. So we can move forward, but only little by little safely but we have to move forward and that's okay to do it step by step when the conditions are not optimal to do this we just had in 2020 a period like that behind us but we kept moving forward but on some days it's very sunny it's very clear you're on top of the hill I would even say sometimes you're on top of the Eiffel Tower and you look and look back and you look forward and you think about the cities and the people you visited and the people you met and what you've learned along the way. And you start to plan how to get to Naples. And today is such a sunny day. So I want to take a look together with you on, on our trip, on our voyage. Um, since we left Copenhagen, what did we do? What did we see? What did we learn? Where are we today? And how can we and will we get to Naples? So for that, I made a small presentation that I would like to walk you through. Because not all of you have been working with us um, since the beginning, obviously. So let's start at our original idea, which was we had an idea to set up a company. And our opportunity were the installers of technology, because that's where we came from when we set up the company. That's who we were. That's the market we knew. Pretty quickly, we figured out, well, products are essential, technology is essential. So we, we need to pull in a number of suppliers, a number of manufacturers, designers of products. And the company we set up basically consisted of three elements. One was people, people from the market, specifically who have an experience and a history as, a installer, as an installer of technology. From the beginning, we decided we would be or become a distributor, um, not a rep, not a marketing agency, not a consultant, not a programming office. No, we wanted to touch and feel the products because we feel a lot if it is attached to, to the system and the product itself. And lastly, a deep sense of service um, because we, we know and we feel and we felt when we were a custom installer, that is exactly what is missing um, if you're an installer of technology. 
So we started buying products and we sold them as good as we could as part of a package, as part of a solution, as part of a system. And we did that and we did that. And at a certain point, we learned that, well, what if we build experience centers? What if we build our VIP lounges? We built a few, we learned a lot, we renewed them, we improved them, we built a system around them on how to use them. Our installers of technology started using them more and more. And the effect was we sold more. Our company clearly grew. So we know, we knew we were on to something. Um, and we made it part of our, of our strategic plan to grow the business and to grow the industry, I might say, in most markets we're in. But where are we today? So today, in the last couple of years, two years, I would say, we've added Partner Zone. So a software platform that we use to work closely together with our customers, um, from invoicing to building systems and projects to the tracking numbers of shipments to product information, marketing information, technical information, training information. Um, and we're improving on that. And we also worked a lot on formulas. Some people call them processes. We call them formulas of success in sales, in how to demo, in how to service people, our operations team, our training team, our technical team. We, we really spent a lot of time and we will continue to do so on formulas of success. And we sold more again. We grew in 2018, 2019. 2020 is a strange year, but in the end, we'll, we'll probably end up in the same place, having lost a full quarter. Um, our business grew again by adding specifically partner zone and to focus on our formulas of success. Most people would say, well, with five or six years of market growth ahead of us, um, a good business model, it's working. We're going to grow for sure. With this business, we are going to grow for sure. I would say 10, 20, 30% a year, um, depending on which market and where it clicks. Um, but I think a 20% growth on average year on year for the next five years is guaranteed with this business model. Um, but this is not the full story. This is not yet the company we are building. So to explain what we are doing, um, I want to paint the picture and show you where we want to be in, I would say, three to five years as a, as a business and as a business model. So the first big shift I want to introduce is that our company started with a clear focus on the installer of technology as the opportunity. And that's how we ran the company for, I would say, the first 10 11, maybe 12 years. But recently, we have shifted our focus as the origin of the opportunity to the home, the luxury home. So the technology that can be delivered to the premium home, that is the opportunity. Not the owner of the home, not the family of the home. The home itself is the opportunity. All the other elements stay in place, but our focus has shifted from the installer as the opportunity to the home itself. And we've also added a number of services. Some of you will have heard about some of them. We have a trained architect on staff who does system designs, specifications, sometimes even advice on how to mix aesthetics with technology. Um, we have engineering services. We have a program to work with architects. We have a specific program to work with builders. Um, and there's other services we're looking at, for example, oversee how to really embed that in everything we do because it has huge potential. And the reason we did that is because we figured out that the architects and the builders are not 
on the side of the business and sometimes are a factor. No, they are an integral part of the way we see this industry and the way we see our company being successful in this industry. So what we are doing is we are supplying services of different types, engineering services, commercial services, training as services, support or function as a type of, let's say insurance policy to um, these architects and builders. We keep selling solutions to the installers of technology. These are the only people we sell products to, but specifically solutions. And we keep working with our suppliers who build great products. Um, most of who we've already worked with uh, quite a number of years. So this is what we call the technology tribe. This is the business we are building. And I want everybody to very much understand that over the last 15 years, um, it took us a while to get where we are today. And remember, we had a crisis of three years from 2008 to 2011. And we just had what I would call pretty big speed bump in 2020 also. And I think it will take us another three to five years to really build this company the way we've envisioned it um, pretty much from the outset with a few improvements and a few changes. The next thing I want to share with you is how do we see growth? Growth as in size, growth as in quality, growth as in success. Well, in order of importance, the growth will happen in the following, I would say, five steps. Some of them will happen at the same time, depending on the market. But the order of these five growth steps is pretty much the way it will, it will go down. The first one is we intend and will get better 1% a day in pretty much everything we already do. So that is often overlooked in big strategic initiatives. With us, it's in our culture. We try to get better at everything from packaging a box to delivering a training to keeping track of important information to the relationship with our customers, uh, with architects and suppliers. We are going to get better 1% a day in everything we do. And that is going to be probably the most powerful engine for growth for our company. Secondly, the product mix. We are not going to be a one trick pony supplying one product only to an installer. Not because we don't appreciate their business, rather because it will show that we don't understand their business enough. If the only thing they buy from us is a round in ceiling speaker, it means we have not listened well enough to our customer to understand how we can help them. So the product mix is of crucial importance um, because if we deliver systems, if we deliver solutions, we can also deliver superior support pre-sales and after sales to our customers. Thirdly, the share of the project is linked to the product mix, but it goes further. Share of the project is also in time. If we have a bigger role in the project with our partners, it means we get in earlier. We are more, let's say, talking about or in a dialogue with all partners on the project instead of being dropped in the middle and being requested, what are the best speakers, amps, and control system you can deliver for, for what I need um, in this project next week. So share of the project is not only the amount, it is only in the time to start early and to stay all the way uh, up to the commissioning stage and see how we can help delivering what we call wow projects. Geographical expansion, um, only fourth in the list. It will happen, probably, but is not top of mind. It will happen when the opportunity 
presents itself to us, but we are not actively looking for that opportunity right now. Um, but it will, it will most likely happen because our business formula uh, has proven to work in four countries. So there's no reason to think it would not happen, uh, not be successful in, in other market spaces. And services. Our company today gets all revenue and is all about selling products. That's where our revenue, that's where our profit comes from. And the services we deliver today are services that are bolted on those products, but none of them, not training, not after sales, not programming, support, not software, is a paid service. But most likely that will happen over time. And it's not sure if we will deliver those services to one of the companies we work with that I just mentioned, to two, to three. Um, but that is something to be, to be looked at. And I'm pretty convinced that will happen over the next years, that we will add a strong service offering on top of the core, which is our product offering. So this is our business model. This is how we're going to grow. And I simply, to clarify, would like to go to the three types of companies that I've mentioned so that we are clear on how we look at them and how we want to build the relationships with them. Installers of technology. The number of installers of technology will pretty much remain the same. Who we work with will change because we are looking at loyal, long-term, vertically integrated partnerships with our installers. But the amount of partners, we feel we have more than enough. We have about 300 partners now in four countries, um, 60 to 65 of them amount for 80% of our business. And the intention is to extrapolate the relationship we have with them, with those 60, to all 300 and not to go from 300 to 500 or 800 to grow the business. So the amount of partners will remain the same, but the project share with each of the partners will grow and continue to grow. And the product mix will be optimized. So again, project share is will, will be earlier in each project and we will be more involved even with commissioning on some big projects to deliver wow experiences to end clients. And the product mix will also be optimized so that we can deliver more complete solutions to installers of technology. So this is the relationship. These are the pillars of our relationship with the installers of, of technology. For our suppliers, the strategic partners, again, will remain pretty much the same. Our strategic partners have supported us when it was, let's say, very misty or it was raining a lot. I also think that we were loyal to our partners when they may have not had the best product in the market or they ran into some speed bumps and some roadblocks. And that has forged a, a strong relationship moving into into the future. Um, geography, we will only move in new geographical markets if we are invited, asked and supported by our strategic suppliers. That is crucial to be successful. For us, we know that from the past and that is something we will definitely um, follow through on in, in the future. Geographical expansion, is and will remain linked to the desire and the request from our strategic partners. Thirdly, joint investments. As we deliver growth and profits for our suppliers, um, we will have to find ways to make joint investments in the market and in the success of this market. Our business basically is capital intensive on three um, axes. Uh, or three components. It's salaries because we work with experienced and loyal people um, 
who are not very much driven by short-term commissions. They have a stable, um, stable financial agreement with us. Secondly, the VIP lounges are a huge investment, um, but they really contribute to, well, being able to get bigger projects, getting pen and market penetration faster. Um, so they're essential. And thirdly, stock, obviously, because the world is going to, um, to faster shipments, faster delivery. Um, so that is another big component of where, where our money is going. So, and we have to look at that together with, with our suppliers on how together we can tackle that, that equation. Lastly, the architects, how do we look at them? Um, we're still learning a lot, but we've, we've, we have some experience and, and we've been working on this for the last three or four years already. So they are the source of the projects. We should never forget that. Um, they may not give us the project, but they are the source of the project. Even if some of the projects come to us through an end client or through an installer of technology, um, the source of the project is for us the architect. The number of architects we work with will grow and continue to grow. I can see that growing um, in the next five years, honestly, month by month, quarter by quarter, year by year. And, and pretty quickly, we will work with more architects than the 300 installers we work with in, in the markets. And the relationships we're looking for with architects are um, long-term relationships. We want to make their life easy we want to help them deliver amazing houses. So we want them to come to us to well, solve some problems. Like we can explain them what's possible and what's not possible. We can explain to them what is the right way to prepare a home for technology of the future. We can design systems for them and point them in the direction of the right installers who should execute those um, projects. So that is the type of relationship we are after with these architects, not one shots for one giant project. No, we want to have long term relationships with the architects um, and make them an integral part of the of the ecosystem we are building. So that's pretty much the summary of who we are as a company, where we're going, what are the building blocks of our company, and I truly hope everybody that works with us, be it inside our company or as a customer, as a partner, as a supplier, um, thinks with us on how to improve each of, these, each of these components as we continue to grow and as we dive into this exciting future that's ahead of us. Because the next five years is gonna be, it's gonna be a bull run. It's gonna be a bull market. We're gonna grow um, and I think then it's even more important to have a strong strategic plan and execute upon it. So with that, I would like to close. Um, Genesis Home Technology Architects, we invite you to together make WOW the standard in homes of today and tomorrow. And certainly, let's think big. Let's do this. Let's go for this. Looking forward to hearing you, hearing from you, and thanks again for your time.